Hi, it's me, Olivia. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel for interesting stories and visit my Patreon page for early access. Link in the description. Thanks. I do not recall the exact details of my way home, but I know I walked for over an hour, attracting attention wherever I passed. But I had somehow toughened up and did not change the street sides anymore whenever somebody come towards me. I ignored the whistles I got, but still cursed having dressed the way I did, especially with my high heels that seemed to kill me, forcing the slow, taunting walk. That has definitely taught me a lesson, and I swore by myself to try a bit more conservative in the future. Actually, I promised myself to stop dressing up altogether. Yes, that was it. I had tried and failed, and all of my earlier excitement had worn off. I would simply go home and dump all my female clothes. Who needs them, anyway? When I finally made it home, I did not even bother to check for my car. I was dead tired and exhausted, and only hoped that my door was still unlocked. I was glad about the precautions I took, and wanted nothing more than a good night's sleep. After all, nothing much has happened. Nobody had recognized me, and people will forget about the slut in the bar as they usually do. They were drunk, anyway. Nobody knows, I thought. Once I entered my apartment, however, I noticed something was different. Initially, it was not clear to me what it was, but then I realized that my jacket holder was empty. Somebody, probably Dom, I thought, must have got in and taken my jackets. Big deal. But then it occurred to me that she did find me out, as I have told her I would live in the flat above. So she knows. So what? There are a lot of guys who dress up as women occasionally. I am just one of them, and actually I had just decided to stop, right? When I came into the kitchen, however, I noticed a small note on the table. Hi, sweetie. I had a good time with you tonight, and I hope we can do this more often. I actually did notice that you were in drag. I had thought so, but I must say that you looked great and fooled me in the beginning. I think we will have a lot of fun together. Well, I will just have to explain to her about my resolution not to dress up anymore, and she will surely understand after what happened tonight. What gives you away is your lack of confidence and your overall shyness, which did not go with your outfit yesterday night. We will have to work on that. Who is we? You will notice that I have done some changes to your wardrobe while you are enjoying yourself in the bar. What? I have thrown out some of your clothes and would like to see you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for coffee to discuss your future. What? I liked the skirt you were wearing tonight and put out a nice top for you. It is on your bed. So I hope I will see you tomorrow. Don't be late. Yours, Dom. And for future references, a real hairdresser always has a suggestion as to how to improve somebody's hairstyle. I hurried into my bedroom and opened the closet. She had taken out all my male clothes. All of it. Neatly folded in the drawers was some lingerie. Some of it was mine. Some of it was black lace she must have added out of her own collection. Dresses hung side by side inside the closet. I saw a very short, black leather dress, which was not mine. All looked very sexy. Blouses and tops were there, but not a single pair of pants. There was even a French-made costume. A note inside the closet read, I have added some of my own stuff, as they don't fit me anymore, and I did not want to throw them out. This and you own clothing will give you a nice start. Don't forget, if you want some of your male clothes back by Monday, you will have to come to me tomorrow. By the way, nice tits. You will do nicely for me, Dom. I was trapped in my own flat without a piece of male clothing, and a woman had found me out and taken a liking to me. Only slowly did I realize the depths of the hole I have dug myself in. This is real. What should I do? I had a look over the treasures I had accumulated over the years. It occurred to me now that, on average, I dress like a slut. Dom apparently had also a taste leaning towards the wild side, the only jacket I saw was an artificial fur coat with leopard print. Did she expect me run around like that in broad daylight? I sure hope not. I slowly undressed, took a shower, and found in my bed a pink silk nightie instead of my usual pajamas. She had not left anything out. Before I fell asleep, I worried. What would be next? I woke up with a start. I had slept like a rock and needed to orientate myself. Okay, I was in my own bedroom. So far, so good. But then I looked down the pink lace nightgown I was wearing, and it all came back to me with a bang. 
I jumped out of my bed and opened the door of my closet. Right. No clothing fairy. My drawers were still filled with female clothing only, most of it on the daring side. I also remembered the note that my neighbor, Dom, had left for me. Come by at 11 for coffee, and we will discuss your future. Don't be late. What should I do now? I looked at my alarm clock. Still just nine o'clock. I had a bit of time to think about my options. It dawned to me that, really, there weren't many. I could just try and defy my neighbor and stay where I was. Only that I had nothing to wear. I had to work the next day, and it was this kind of be there or it's your arse day, where being sick is simply not an option. We had a meeting at nine, and I would have to report on the outcomings of my trip to England. Well, they would be surprised, I thought by myself. Staying inside my own flat did not solve my clothing problem. She would simply stay where she was, too, and I was still without a decent outfit for Monday. All the stores are closed on Sunday. Not good. I concluded that I simply had to dress up and go to her place. I needed to talk to her. She had had her bit of fun with me, and I had to admit that she had won and I had lost. I owed her a big one. But, hey, now give me back my clothes and I will make up for it, okay? Yes, that was what I had to do. But simply the thought of going over to her place in broad daylight, dressed as a woman, gave me the creeps. So far, I had only been walking outside in the dark in less frequented areas close to the city center, until yesterday, that is. Sometimes I had made plans to go for a Sunday afternoon stroll, but I had always backed up in the last minute and simply stayed inside, reading. But today I had no choice. I took a shower and started to put on the clothes that Dom had left on my bed the night before. They were not as hot as my outfit yesterday, and I silently thanked her for that. I started with the white lace body stocking, which shaped my waist, and had an inserted C-cup bra. I looked at my breast forms that were lying in the bathroom from the night before. How proud I had been of myself. The moment I had brought them home from England, I had dumped all the old balloons I had used before, filled with water. They were a lot cheaper, of course, and they had the advantage that I had been able to fill them to my liking, but they simply could not compete with the attachable silicone forms I had bought, and so I had thrown them out. I had bought C-cup forms because I figured if I was to spend so much money, I wanted the whole thing. But especially with the top that I was going to wear, I had preferred the balloons to be filled to an A-cup size only, shaping nice and pert breasts. Call this a coming of age of a cross dresser. I inserted the breast forms and looked at myself in the mirror. My tits appeared a bit too large to me, but then I did not have anything different. Also, I was sure that Dom preferred it that way. She had written as much in her note. I opened the package of white stay-up stockings that Dom had left out and slid them up my legs. You could see a couple of light leg hairs, but then I was going to wear the long skirt, and that would just have to do. I slipped into the skirt of last night and, after a very close shave, started with my makeup. Foundation. Dark pink eyeshadow on my eyelids, light pink above, brown eyeliner. I had worn black last night, but brown is a bit less obvious and just enhances my green eyes, brown eyeliner also to dye my dark blonde eyebrows, mascara just at the outside of my eyes, pink lipstick, and a bit of blush. Perfect. Now my wig. I brushed it and noticed that it had not suffered from my personal ordeal the night before. The earrings a friend had given to me. I used to go for makeovers to her and we became friends. She had enjoyed doing my makeup and she frequently claimed that I had been a perfect canvas for her. She was an artist. I had missed her since moving to Stockholm but had learned a lot from her to improve my makeup skills. She had given these earrings to me as a farewell gift. They were clip-ons, large and golden, and fitted very nicely to my new wig, which leaves the ears mostly free, elegantly curving behind them. Now the top. It was pink and of ribbed cotton with short sleeves and a high collar. I had bought it a few months ago, when I had decided to dress, maybe a bit less sexy sometimes, but with less chances of being harassed. I pulled the top over my head, careful with the wig and the makeup. It was tight, and I noticed in the mirror how it emphasized my flat belly and my large breasts. You could see the nice features of the cup holders of seductive sheer through the material, and the nipples sticked out prominently. Damn it. 
I rearranged my breast forms a bit to the side, trying to hide my wide shoulders. That worked to a degree, and I looked would give myself a pass. Not much to be done about my breasts, though. They were large, nicely arranged inside the cups, and simply begged for attention with nipples that seemed to ask to be sucked. In fact, they looked a lot like the breasts of a healthy-looking girl that I liked to stare at on occasions. Why had I picked the largest nipple size? I really wished now I had kept the balloons. I put on my shoes. Slippers today with a fairly low heel would do. I went into the corridor and looked at myself in the full-body mirror. An elegant woman, casually dressed in a wide, black skirt with white stockings and a plain, pink top. So far, so good. Spectacular tits, though. Shit. But nothing to be done about that. It was only 10 o'clock now, and there was still time to have some breakfast and think about a plan. Breakfast proved easy to come by, a plan not. No matter how I turned it, I was in a fix. No clothes. No car keys. No apartment keys. Got to work tomorrow. No clothes. Need to see her and talk some sense into her. What exactly should I say? While I was sipping my coffee, I saw a couple passing by my kitchen, glancing inside at me. Shit. Need to be more careful. I went and closed the curtains and sat down again. No clothes. 10.30. Time was flying. The walkways outside were slowly becoming more busy. People were going to church. People were going for a Sunday brunch. I never noticed that so many people were around on a Sunday morning. 10.45. I just could not go out like that. I couldn't. What would she do? I did not want to know. But then I came to the conclusion that, no matter how I looked at it, this was really out of my hands now. I simply had to follow her instructions, hoping I was not seen by any of my neighbors, hoping that she had more sense than it appeared right now. But hey, even if somebody saw me leaving my flat and drag, this could always be a woman I had picked up in a bar the night before. That helped a bit. 10.50 needed to get ready slowly. Nice and sunny outside with a light breeze. Sunny? Well, there was an idea. I had bought sunglasses a while ago for exactly that purpose. They were woman's sunglasses and would take some of the pressure off. Nobody could look me in the eye anymore and chances of passing were drastically improved. Where were they? In a moment of panic, I was all over my apartment but was able to find them. Great. Much better. 10.55. Don't be late. Time to go. I grabbed my purse that Dom had left here the night before, took a deep breath, opened the door, and stepped out. This time I did not even have keys to lock my apartment, and so I simply pulled the door in the lock and quickly stepped down the three stairs into the walkway. A family was walking on the far left, giving me a brief glimpse, and a guy came from from the right. I had to turn right, and he gave me a very interested look his eyes fixed on my breasts, though, which were bouncing slightly with every step. I quickly walked by him, turned in the way that led to Dom's flat, and with a few steps was standing in front of her door, my heart racing. Eleven o'clock. I rang her bell and waited, standing with my back to the walkway for a minute that seemed like an eternity. No response. I rang again, feeling like a thousand eyes were looking at my back. Still nothing. I did not dare to turn around. After about five minutes of fruitless waiting, I decided I had to move on and go back to the safety of my own flat. I was just about to turn around and leave when I heard her voice from behind. Oh, you're in time. I am sorry, but I just went out for a walk. I turned around and looked at her. She looked great, dressed in black leather pants and a light summer jacket with leopard print. You look nice, sweetheart. She shouted out, and I returned her compliment timidly. It slowly dawned to me that she was probably just coming from my apartment and had locked it from outside. She still had my keys. Damn it. I was sure she had locked me out, but she was just as cheerful as yesterday night. So shall we go inside? I managed to ask timidly. But why? It is such a nice day for a walk. I know a good place for brunching where we can sit down and chat. It sounded like a suggestion, but I knew better than that. I had no choice but to go with her. As the night before, Dom was dominating the conversation. But I must admit that I thoroughly enjoyed that part. She kept assuring me that I looked great and nobody could tell. 
I noticed that most people passing us gave us only a brief glimpse and then minded their own business. I silently enjoyed my skirt flying with every little breeze. Dom told me that passing was all about confidence. If you are comfortable with yourself, people will not dare to bother you. That's what gave you away yesterday. You really look great and nobody will ever notice if you show a bit of confidence. So chin up and tits out. You have nothing to be ashamed of. We chatted about my cross-dressing experience and I did not even bother to lie as I was sure she would catch me immediately. She made me feel comfortable and accepted. After a walk of 20 minutes, she directed us towards a cafe, which offered a brunch. I hesitated, but she just walked ahead without giving me a glimpse, and I knew I had to follow her. She picked a table for two at the window and sat down. You will have to take your sunglasses off in here, dear, or otherwise you look silly. She was right, but it still took me a lot of courage to take off my shades. Tits out, she commanded suddenly, as I tried to hunch my shoulders, I do not want to be caught here with you, just because Mrs. Pound Me and Nars thinks she doesn't feel comfortable with herself. She had not even bothered to lower her voice, and I looked nervously around, but nobody of the customers had heard her. I sat up straight, nervously glancing down by glorious breasts. Chin up. She talked even louder, and some people briefly looked up. That's better, and keep that as a warning. Then she smiled at me. I was fucked, and we both knew it. A waiter came and brought us menus, offering coffee. It took him a couple of moments to direct his looks away from my breast, and he spilled some coffee. Now, what the hell is your problem? Dom shouted at him, and he blushed deeply as he apologized and left, not without a last glance at my breasts. I was embarrassed, too, by all the attention we got from the other customers, but Dom obviously enjoyed the whole situation. The waiter returned and took our orders, and we were back at our conversation. I told her how I had improved my outfit, and that I was proud of myself for daring to leave the car and go for a night stroll, but how I just was not ready for a night like yesterday's. Wait and see. Soon you will be totally comfortable in your sluttiest outfits in the busiest bars, she assured me. I was not sure if I found that comfortizing. She told me that she knew a lot about cross dressers and their secret fantasies. I sure hoped not, because she had had cross dressing friends before and read some of their magazines. Again, not much of a comfort. We will simply have to break you in, she finished. Great. Again this we. I had not dared to ask her for my male clothes yet, but now was the time. I told her about the important meeting I had the next day and how I desperately needed my clothes back. She was well satisfied to hear that. I will put you through a little test today, and when you pass, I will give you back you clothes. Don't worry, she assured me when she saw my face, I have already started the test, and you are doing extremely well. And now tits out, she commanded in the end. The waiter brought our orders. He blushed again. We left the cafe. Let's do a bit of sightseeing. How well do you know the city? Again a suggestion, but again not much of a choice. She entered a bus that went downtown, and I had to follow her. An embarrassing moment occurred when I needed to pay for the ride, but had no money on me. I had to call back Dom and ask her for money. The driver starred at me. Dom paid for me and walked ahead to the very end of the bus, and I felt twenty pairs of eyes starring at me. I had learned my lesson, though, and kept my chin up and my shoulders back, but was glad I brought the sunglasses, which I was wearing again. To my terror, most of the seats in the back were taken, and Dom sat down next to a young girl, while the only seat left for me was next to some middle-aged guy with, with a Walkman. Out of the corner of one eye, I saw Dom smiling satisfied, while out of the corner of the other eye, I saw the guy next to me staring at my breast out of the corner of his eye. I had never realized how much well-bodied women are harassed in public and made a mental note to myself to treat women more respectfully than I felt treated right now. I pressed my knees firmly together and arranged my skirt, but I felt his legs started to press against mine. When I retreated, he gave up immediately but kept starring. We arrived downtown and Dom jumped off the bus with me following suit. We walked around and did sightseeing. I enjoyed the breeze playing with my skirt all the time, and I must say that I felt more comfortable with every moment. Clearly, 
Nobody had recognized me for what I was, and if they had, they did not care. Wait a second, said Dom, and went to a Japanese tourist passing by. Would you be so kind and take a picture of the both of us? She asked him and produced a digital camera out of her handbag. Shit. I knew I was in for it. Take off your shades, sweetie. Two women at the waterfront on a late summer day. One smiling. One not. Click. Great. Thank you very much. It continued this way. By late afternoon, she must have had twenty pictures of the two of us or of me alone, taken by herself. She would direct me in a way that my tits were the single biggest attraction in the pictures. Me bending over a water fountain, drinking, my tits hanging down. Click. She was a skilled photographer, using the light to her advantage. At one point, she arranged me in the shadow on a park bench, reading a book she got out of her handbag, with my legs crossed in a way that my skirt gave look on the seams of my stockings. I tried to protest, but I knew it was a lost cause. She was in control and immediately let me know of that. I gave in. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access. Thanks.